What's going on guys, welcome along to another video, I'm Matt over at DSR. This morning I was taking out this Ducati Street Fighter V4S. This afternoon I'm taking out this bad boy, Harley Davidson Fat Bob. Some of you commented on my Harley Davidson breakout video that 25 grand was too much money. Well this could be your perfect bike from Harley Davidson. The Fat Bob comes in at £19,000, brand new, good to go on the road. Looking at the two, do you think there's five, six grand difference between them? That's got a 117 engine, this has got the 114 Milwaukee 8 engine. This isn't a comparison video between the two, but this is going to be a video of me answering my own question. Do I regret selling my own Harley Davidson Fat Bob? Ah, <sighs> let's find out. Starting us off with any Harley Davidson, we need to be looking at the engine. This is their Milwaukee 8 114 engine producing a whopping 1868 cc the brake horsepower is nothing to shout about it is only 93 brake horsepower but i tell you what it's the torque that this bike produces 155 newton meters of torque what does that mean for everyday riding well it's not going to be the fastest in the straight line but i tell you what every single gear is just going to pull like a freight train How much is a bike like this going to set you back? Well, this one is coming in just shy of £19,000. It is a lot of money, don't get me wrong, but when you start looking at the Harley Davidson breakout, that is pushing around £25,000. So actually, £6,000 saving, not too bad. There are three different colour options for the Fat Bob. We've got this one, which is your black with a little bit of grey accent. This is going to be your stock colour. You're also going to have your grey with a little bit of black and then finally red with a bit of black. Both the grey and the red are going to add an extra £440 to the total price of this bike. Let me know in the comments box below which one do you think looks better, black, grey or red. Obviously this bike has zero wind protection, there is no fairing on this so that means it's going to be clean air hitting our top half. Yes, you are going to feel the effects of the wind when you are twisting this on, especially on the motorway. Uh, it can get a little bit tiresome. So for me, I kind of feel like I have to hold on to the handlebars when I'm when I'm starting to push the, the speed up. But at least there will be no strange buffeting or any wind noise that's going to be hitting your helmet. Well, as good as time as any, this seat height is 710mm. I'm 6'1", and as you can see, both feet are flat on the floor no dramas whatsoever and a real nice bend in the knees as well i really like the looks of this harley i love the front end i love the lights i know previously i think they were round and people preferred the uh the round ones but me i love these leds we do have self-cancelling indicators one thing to uh, note for the fat bob is your left indicator is on the left hand side of the handlebar and the right indicator is on the right side something that zoe found quite confusing when she took out the sport glide one of those things it's muscle memory you'll remember it at some point something that harley have done right for many years is the level of customization that you can do on their bikes is unreal honestly their catalogue is about two inches thick of all the different parts for these bikes if you're here and you're like ah not sure on the handlebars you can change them seat change it pegs change it like, everything can be changed and that's part of the uh the beautiful thing with harley is you can really make it your own i'm a big fan of on this bike compared to uh some of the others is this has got like a, a low profile uh, air filter some of the others have got like the snorkel which you can get for this but what i find for the snorkel is my shin hits hits it as it's poking out so uh, for me that would be no good and i would have to get something like this but this has already got it so you don't need to get one it's nice to see in the tachometer if you flick through the uh, the different menu options using the left hand button is it's got a range indicator some of the other bikes don't have that so this is showing a range of 73 miles uh, and it's got three bars left 13.6 litre tank on this you're getting around 150 miles 
because it's just really fuel economical. We don't have a massive 240 rear, we've got a 180 rear on this, so it flicks, it really does. Gotta go find ourselves some twisties in a minute. Whilst cruising along, there are some vibrations. I mean, you need to kind of expect it with a bike like this, the big lump of an engine. So you do get some vibrations through the handlebars, the pegs and the seat. So any real long distance touring, you got to take some breaks. But I would personally be taking a break every hour and a half or so, mainly because I'm an old man and my back can't take it. What do you think guys, should I go back to Harley? Does this suit me more than my BMW GSA? The fueling on this is kind of spot on. Uh, it's on fourth gear, 40 miles an hour and on off the throttle there's not really any jerkiness which you, you may expect from a bike like this but it's not it's really nice really smooth and you can just come on and off the throttle yeah, just like that <laughs> what's going on here old person day out okay so we've got some more flowy b roads here As long as we can not run over the old people. I'm 115 kilos. Suspension is actually pretty good. We'll see what it gets like when we start pushing it on a bit. Twice on a Harley. Ruined the camera. State of that. Uh. There we are then, managed to pull over, take a little walk, walk around. Brakes on this are Harley Davidson's own brand. Four piston at the front, two at the rear. Nothing to shout about. Uh, they work, you have to be comfortable kind of getting on, on the brakes quite hard. Remember, it's a 306 odd kilo bike, it's heavy. Put me on it, we're pushing a few kilos. So, uh, me personally, something potentially may want to upgrade as in brake pads, brake discs, if you were to get this bike. I love the look of the bronze. Shame they didn't carry it on with the slip-ons. My personal bike, when I had the Fat Bob, had the Vance & Hines slip-ons. They sounded amazing, but more importantly, they looked spot on and they fitted the character of this bike. 
these silver silencers just don't do it for me. The number plate holder at the rear is quite cumbersome, quite big. What you can do is you can get rid of this and you can get a side mounted uh, number plate and it makes this bike just look even better. And finally, this is the headlight I was on about. Uh, I like the look of it, not only that, you, if you can't really see it in the video uh, or in photos, but in person at the bottom here, it says Harley Davidson as well. Just looks really, really good. I am sweating out off this bike. I'm gonna get back on it, get some fresh air. Listen to that rumble. My final thoughts then on do I regret selling my fat bob? No, I don't regret selling it because it was a means to an end and it opens the gate to me getting the GSA. Would I buy another fat bob? Yes, 100%. I absolutely love having this Harley Davidson cruiser lifestyle in my life. But for me, it would need to be a second bike. My requirements aren't quite met just by the Harley. But I've always said in my previous Harley videos that for me the Harley is a second bike. But this is a some Sunday bike. This is a I'm going out for me just for a nice casual ride. This is what I'll take. My GSA is a workhorse. It's got the bags. It's got the mileage. It can go and take me wherever I need to. This is what I pick for the fun. Mirrors on this aren't too bad. Getting around 50% kind of behind my shoulders. One thing I've always hated is going for the clutch and brake lever, clutch more so because the mirror arm on the left is situated in a slightly different position, is that my knuckles hit the bottom of the mirror. So if I was going to get this Harley, what you can do is you can take these, unbolt them, flip them down and have them hanging down from underneath. So you don't even need to buy other mirrors, you can just use these and just rotate them under, which is exactly what I would do. Slow speed handling. It's good for a bike of its size. Still not put my feet down. I've had people ask me before about the space underneath the seat. There is none. The passenger seat sits right above uh, and straight onto the rear fender. So uh, there isn't any space to carry anything extra. If you are interested in taking out this fat bob, then head on over to a Riders of Bridgewater and they'll hook you up, they'll get you on this. Test out this, test out the breakout, test out all the Harleys until you find the one that suits you because the good thing is they've got quite a few different styles, riding styles, etc. Let me know in the comments box below, do you prefer the look of this blacked out fat bob? or the chromed up breakout for 23. If you have enjoyed this quick video on the Fat Bob, then please make sure you like the video. More importantly, subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty of videos coming out every single week. If you are interested in watching my Harley Davidson breakout review, then check out this video here. And then if not, until the next one, ride safe.